Good evening, Trinidad and Tobago. It is Thursday, Thursday. I need to start practicing my a little better. Thursday, the 10th of August, 2017. You're live with me. And while we're waiting for people to come on board and to, to hook up with the show to link up tonight, I got, a, I got a YouTube video sent to me today by somebody named Sharon. I don't have many Sharon friends who would send me a song. But it's a song that I got as a message from Sharon. And I want to say, Sharon, thank you. The only Sharon I know, I don't know. But, Kit, while you're romping with Ravina, find out for me. Find out if it, this comes from my youth. It's a clock on the dot. Call them out. Philip, my dear. Last night I thought was you in here. Where did you go? Working for good old England. Missing out all the action. My dear, do you know? There was a man in the bedroom. Wearing your shoes. Trying on the royal costume. Dipping in the royal perfume. I'm telling you true. Like you were younger, he took just like you were stronger, he linger like you were harder, he lily like you were harder. Share it, share it. All the pages, all the groups, get him where we out. And I took him for you. I look, I don't know, I look for it, so he's shooting. The mighty spawn. Look for that, huh? Joke is joke, but damn joke and no joke. Um, yeah, all in all. Calypso, where, where the history of this thing? Anyway, the first minute of the show every night, what I you'll see me busy doing is sharing the video link to all the groups that I am a member of, and you should do the same. Let people know because we have a bit of a following. Today I got a WhatsApp message, and it said, "If you didn't view Philip Alexander's live video nine eight seventeen, go find it on YouTube. Predators in Paradise, a must." And that was last night's video. So clearly, we're resonating with people. Tonight's video is called Transparency and Accountability. And it's called Transparency and Accountability for a reason. Because now that everybody and their brother jumping on the bandwagon of the issue of the Tobago Ferry fiasco, in their hunt for Bacchanal, they're still missing the real issue, the overwhelming issue, the overriding issue, the point of contention, and that is, to whom did Rohan Senanan and his puppet Port Authority board set up to replace the authentic board that he unceremoniously removed in the dead of night for refusing to do his bidding? To whom did he and they give the ferry contract? The Tobago ferry contract? Who, Rohan Senanan? Who? Who are the beneficial owners of Bridgeman Services Limited? Who? Rohan Senanan, we want to know, are you a material beneficiary, an owner of Bridgeman Services Limited? Rohan Senanan, are you a member of the ownership cabal? Who else in your government, Rohan Senanan, are owners besides you, if you? Who else are owners of Bridgeman Services Rohan Sinanan, why is it so difficult to get this information, Rohan Sinanan? Is it that this thing is so rife with corruption that it is going to pull your government down as I forecasted six months ago when I mentioned the words super fast Galatia and told Trinidad a bacchanal brewing here? You see, we still have the information, but I can't say it yet until you trip and it slip and you say, because them boys and them who good at playing hide and seek with all their dummy companies, them good at hiring jackass lawyers. And I need to guide myself because I want to spend every day in court defending bullshit. But I want to ask you, Rohan, come clean, come clean, tell the people. Who did you give the 
contract to. You see, it worse than a soul select. Because the rumors that flying around this thing now is they didn't approach you. You approach them. This is the information we have. Who did you approach? Who owns Bridgman Services? A company that was a ghost five days before they got the contract. Who did you give the contract to, Rohan, in a conversation over drinks that resulted in them hiring a certain legal firm to put together a company profile quickly and create a company? Who did you give the contract to, Rohan Sinanan? Who did you and Bihari give the contract to, Rohan Sinanan, that went all over the place looking for a boat after they find out the value of the contract that you, you were able to create? When you created the Bacchanal, when you collapsed the authentic, existing, legitimate ferry service, when you collapsed it deliberately, you and Fitzgerald Hines, Rohan, when you all at your who's bidding, is, does this go right up to the top of the cabinet? Is the prime minister as leader of the cabinet in the know? Is he in the loop? Is he in the cabal? Is Keith Rowley named as one of the material beneficiaries of Bridgman Services Limited? Why it is so difficult for you, if a police officer stop you right now and ask you for everything in your two front pocket, you had to tell him, why you can't tell us this? Why press conference after press conference and nonsense after nonsense, all we get in from you is nonsense? Why is the Port Authority of Trinidad and Tobago Limited putting out press releases on behalf of a private company? Bridgman Services Limited now holds the contract. So anything to do with the contract must come as a release from Bridgman Services. Why don't we know the name of a single signatory? Why we are only hearing from you and Alison Lewis of the Port Authority of Trinidad and Tobago and nobody from Bridgman Services. A boat meander its ass all the way around the world. Stall, collapse, they loot it, vandalize it. All kind of madness we hear in. You cancel the contract before the boat reach Trinidad. You say you cancel it for coming late. Who did you serve those papers to? Who did you tell? Who did you pick up the phone and say, we cancel in this contract? Who? That's all we care to know. You see, Stephen Williams, we knock in on his door. Stephen, Stephen Williams. Somebody see for look at find Stephen Williams now. We want Stephen Williams after you tell us because you need to tell us because you see, the people of Trinidad and Tobago, they're desperate to see some political pretenders and party financiers make big jail. And we want to see that now. And we want to see the level. And, I, and we are taking no small fish, you know. We are taking no small fish. We are taking no... And Ferdy Ferreira done steer us in the right direction. A, 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 almost a founder of the PNM. You cast him aside. You pelt him and the rest of the board out. Rohan Sinanan. Who did you pelt him out for? Who got you to act ultra varies of the law? Who got you to make a decision outside of the rules of transparency and proper procurement conduct? Who? 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 David Abdullah jumped out himself, found his lost way to this issue today. David Abdullah on behalf of the entire country of Trinidad and Tobago, miss us with your opportunistic bullshit, friend. You show up late to the dance and want to dance with the bell of the ball? You now come, sit up, shut up, and try to look intelligent. The rest of us dealing with this, brother, we flay in it. It's like a slow undress. We have we tools. We know what we're looking for. We know what we're looking for. We know what we're going and deal with. We don't need you. Don't come in the people dance and pelt out misinformation. The media today, copy and paste media, didn't ask David Abdullah. Didn't say to him, David, you're watching Mark Bassant on TV. You're talking bullshit. This has nothing to do with procurement. So you missed the boat, figuratively, pun intended, because 
We didn't procure any vessels. So you calling to ask about the procurement of vessels makes no sense. You sound like a fool, and yet the media still carry it. David Abdullah, the issue here is not about vessel procurement. The state of Trinidad and Tobago has procured none. We, through the Minister of Works and Transport, a senior member of Keith Rowley's cabinet, on Keith Rowley's approval, gave a contract to a ghost. And we want to know who. So David Abdullah, take your bullshit and ride. Back to you, Rohan, because we're talking to you, Rohan. We're talking to you. And we have information, you know. We have information. That's why uh, you, you're dancing the slow dance of death. You can't wriggle free. And I told you that in April. I told you because you see it come in. Or they get cocky and arrogant. Cocky and arrogant. You thought you could get away with anything. Or they was cocked for Q-Rep Interchange. I ain't hearing about that at all. Because I asked Rohan, who besides you owns Kedona Drive-In? The land that you want to build Q-Rep Interchange on himself to himself. Back. And I keep telling you this. And that's what I told Trinidad. That young woman police officer, they say she's pregnant, she could be having triplets. All the people who distracted by her with her legs open, you could bring the whole police force at Trinidad and Tobago, let them strip down and open their legs. We're not getting distracted. We're not getting distracted. You see when Eric Williams put that curse on Trinidad and Tobago about us being a nine-day people, he forget to say that it's because he and the organizations that he was a part of owned the media. And the media was allowed to dictate what we thought and when we thought it. But social media has changed the game. It's freed the minds. The average person of Trinidad and Tobago now has an opinion. And they understand now fully that they have a right to that opinion. So we come back to this. Simple question, Rohan. And to the copy and paste media, to Samson Woogly Woogly Nanton, who went on Facebook and talked about my five or six followers. Somebody sent me two screenshots today and I shared, but I pulled it down because I didn't want to look cocky. But they sent me two screenshots. They sent me a screenshot of my profile that says 20,000 20, plus followers. And they sent me Samson's profile that says 4,000 followers. So when he referred to my five or six followers three times in one post on Facebook, I realized it's pure jealousy. Jealousy. It must be eating your red ass, eh, Samson? But let me talk real journalism here. Go on the Guardian Media tomorrow and run the headline. Who? Five question marks. Five. The people want to know. Keith Rowley, Faris and Rowley, Stuart Young, Rohan Sinanan, who owns Bridgman's Services Limited? That is all we care to know. We will make our decisions after because trust me, if it is the cabal, if it is the band of financiers, if it is the hundred million dollar man, if it is that posse, we will fire your ass. And we cocked and waiting to fire your ass. Saturday, we have three meetings in the Progressive Empowerment Party. We galloping at a speed. We want to make sure that we have executive teams ready to field candidates. Six weeks, we were chill. We were chill. We, we want to make sure Trinidad know because there is ask. Who you go put? Because you know, we want under no circumstances the UNC. So you will put the Progressive Empowerment Party. But we will stick up in there because this is on a campaign night. Tonight, we're prosecuting. We're prosecuting Rohan Sinanan. Rohan Sinanan, you have a responsibility as the Minister of Transportation to come clean with the country. Because you evaded all of the rules of procurement that exists. You and your manufactured destruction created a mess for Tobago that we were supposed to be happy that you rode in, you and the Kabbalists, to solve the problem. But you've been failing. Not only that, Trinidadians fed up. We fed up lose money. $350,000 a day is a lot of money at a time when you're saying, and your government saying, 
Dwen, where did Dwen? How come we don't see the Dwen anymore? Somebody see the Dwen gone fishing with Stephen Williams. We don't hear from the Dwen. We don't see the Dwen. The Dwen come, he move like Marshall. He whip the crowd into a frenzy and he gone. We don't know what's going on with the economy. The nation in tatters. But the 1% opening Starbucks and KFC by the week. I post a picture of a lobster roti from a little cafe in Santa Cruz. Toot bagay. Roti Cafe, the best roti in the world. The 1% will never see me again in a foreign franchise. I tell you this, eh? I hate to be a hypocrite. Today I needed soap. And I went in, Massa, I mean Massey, four roads. And I told you that I'm never going back in Massa. I mean Massey. I told you that I'm never going back in Massey. Since Tropical Storm Breath, I've not. But I went in there today. I went in there today. And while I was inside, they can't went. I think that was a sign from God. Get out. I come back out. I was going by my soap by a small shop. And the little and the little parlor took by guy roti cafe. The whole is getting roti too small so. Best roti in the world. And I, and that gone viral. People from all over the world want to come and get. And when you go, I not get no benefits from this, but tell them Philip Alexander send you the treat you nice. They treat me like royalty. I will never be. In KFC, Subway, Burger King, McDonald's, all that junk food. You know what they call it? Junk food. And I'm not, I'm not getting distracted. And we're not digressing. But as we on it, it's food that is junk. It has no value. It has no nutritional value. The caloric value just gets you fat. It doesn't help you. It's not burnt for energy. It is just waste. All of these, Subway, they create a company called Doctors Inc. to open Subway. Not one doctor is part of it. You like bullshit? Take it soft and runny. No KFC. KFC, you know, you know the Colonel's secret recipe? The same thing Chinese people know for a hundred years. The same thing Chinese people use it to get you high every time you eat Chinese food. You're barely full and you're hungry still. The same Vitsin, the same MSG, monosodium glutamate. That is what... The KFC, the Colonel's secret recipe is KFC gets you high. That is what MSG is, an excitotoxin. It's an excitotoxin. Google it. You don't really taste the food. You feel the food in your head. It excites your brain, an excitotoxin. Some people like me who have a sensitive brain will get migraines if you eat too much MSG. But KFC secret ingredient, so the 11 herbs and spices, miss me with that bullshit. MSG. Royal Castle don't use that. Royal Castle gets my business. Royal Castle gets my business. Royal Castle is a local company. So I'll go there. I will not go to churches. Churches is a franchise. Every time I shop at churches, if I go to churches, my foreign exchange that I desperately need jumping up. So I'm not going there. I'm not going in any company now that is a waste of foreign exchange. Maggie, Nestle. You know what Maggie is? Forget all the other bullshit and the advertisement and all the pretty things they're painting up on people's parlor. Maggie is MSG. Excitotoxin. Add some excitement to your food. That's what I mean. Get your children high. Get your children high. Maggie soup, MSG, Vetsin. All the different ways they have to name it. There are about 15 different ways to name it. I reach all the way here. I want to just bring myself back. 180 degrees. We, the people of Trinidad and Tobago, now, in this time, have a responsibility to be responsible to ourselves, to each other, to our children, to our loved ones, to this nation. And you see this issue with that port authority and the award of that, that contract to a ghost company that the company they went to to get supply for boats, told Trinidad, it is better you deal with us directly, who have hundreds of years experience in maritime industry, rather than deal with a flip-flop company that was just formed to come on subcontract. You see, that's the game they're playing. Win the contract, pass it on. They have a massive contractor in this country. He building everything that there is to build. But all he doing is subcontracting it out to the same small contractor. You know. He winning the bill at 11 million. He telling them, you building it for 8 million. Money out of people's pocket. Money out of people's pocket. Games all you're playing. Progressive Empowerment Party will make it law 
that the only people who could bill in any constituencies are contractors and companies and people from that constituency. So you cannot be an overnight biggest big again. No more of that. Because you could only operate in one. Yes, there will be national projects. Those things will opera operate under a specific regime of transparency and accountability. We need a system that awards contracts, not like how Rohan and his puppet board did it. You need to advertise for, we need a ferry provider. Because from what I understand, the price that we pay to rent the boat buys the boat in 208 days. So why we not buying the boat? Why we didn't take money out of unit trust and buy the boat? Why? Like the ambulances. Why don't we take money out of unit trust and buy the ambulances? One year's rental of ambulances, one year's value of that contract buys us all the ambulances we need. Four months justice on time, running up and down with prisoners, builds two courts outside the jails and saves us money perpetually. So why we didn't do that on the port? Why didn't Rohan Sinanand, a retailer by trade, a retailer by reputation, a retailer by road, that's who he is. He's a grocer. Rohan Sinanand know to buy for $2, sell for $4, keep a dollar, spend the next one. That's what he know. Why didn't Rohan do that for Trian Tobago on the port? Why didn't he bring his expertise and experience to bear on this transaction? Why didn't he fire the super fast Galatia and say, you see what's going on here with that law firm and the transaction? Because there was some bullshit in the Galatia, but he bullshit us more. It's like he pull us, he pull the rapist off of us to rape us worse. So where do we go, Trinidad and Tobago? Where do we go? What do we do? In a world where PNM and UNC was always our only option. Because the Congress of the people sell us down the road like river slaves. They don't care. The Congress of the people didn't care. They wanted office so bad they don't do anything. And Dukes, you and Cams, make a lie of the people. Kamala Prasad, the, the progressive empowerment party is having a meeting this week to announce we will be on the ground in 41 constituencies, something the United National Congress has never done. So don't pretend to send your little hitman hack squad to be bad talking us. Until you are a national party, you play down on the ground with MSJ and COP and TOP and the rest of them four seat and five seat party. We are intending to be a national party. And we have in our sights the demon, the Balize house, that, that denizen of hatred, that cancer of corruption that has destroyed this nation with your assistance. But they are in our sights. When we're done, they must rent out that space where Balize house is now for Chinese restaurant, car parts. That political party must die dead. There must be no more. The only time people must say PNM is they say, boy, you remember when things was hard? PNM. PNM. Remember when they used to get jammed for everything? When school used to fail? Healthcare was madness. We didn't grow no food. The price of oil, we didn't know what it was. And by the time we get it, they teeth it. Remember them days? PNM days? Yeah, boy. But what about when we take a break and we bring in UNC? Grow up and feel and take off your clothes. Contract for money. The Progressive Empowerment Party. The Progressive Empowerment Party has every intention of contesting the next general election and to lead the people to the promised land of a nation fully operational, guided by the strongest tenets of good governance and delivering on policies, programs, and ideas second to none. Because I know you all sit down in the room I right hear and discuss it's the, the PEP plans. Because every single Trinidadian, no matter how low on the totem pole, get it. That home ownership, health care, education, affordable food and security, that's all that matters. Do that and get out the way. A government with a legislative agenda, four things. Four things. We write in a simple contract, you know. Four things are our legislative agenda. Recall, referendum, campaign finance, and procurement. 
When we done the country clean, we go in the parliament with black disinfectant and bleach. We will erase the memory of the nastiness that took place in this country. Undo and redo all them mocking pretenders occupying high public office positions. All them fellas in immigration and police service and the judiciary and all of this. Undo, redo. The country will become something functional. For the first time last night, I get an email from a friend. He's a senior military man in the United States military. He says, brother, you know, I'm right here. I said, partner, you must know it's you we call in. You must know Trinidad, there are no road surprises. We will pay Bill Bratton whatever he want. Come here, undo and redo Trinidad Tobago Police Service. Close down all them police station. Close down all. One police command center in every constituency. You come to work on your shift, on your watch. Three eight-hour watches, three eight-hour shifts. You work on a shift. And you come to work and you get your radio, your gun, your body camera, your pepper spray, where else you need. And if you are a walkabout police officer, they will tell you what streets you're walking. And you and the 24 other police, stations, police officers who are walking about being supported by a car that have two people. So when you say back up, we need back up, somebody right around the corner. Nobody's sitting down in police station getting fat. So when you see back and I'll going on in the community, they know to call you. I told Joanna Camp Campens today, we're having a nice conversation in the gym. I say, you and all the ladies in your community, go into the police station. Give them a list. Say, these are the mothers of my community. These are our cell phone numbers. We want yours. We're going to put you all on a WhatsApp list. Anytime something going on in this community, we will message you. And we will know and we will see when you read. And you must respond. Because your mandate, what you signed up for, is to protect and serve. Not to sit and relax. All this thing about building police station, we sell them. We need no more. We need a command center, police command center in every constituency. Put police on the road. Put police in the community. You have no choice. You will get to know them. They will get to know you. You will know them and they will know you. And anybody who come into your community after nine at night, say, partner, I'm sorry for taking your picture and sending it to the police, but... You know the times we're living in, so if you're going by somebody, you explain to them when they pass and check you. And that's how you run a country. You run a country deliberately with purpose and intent to serve the people. We've never had that. We've had rapists, raiders, and marauders. We've never had a government come into office in this country with any plans, programs, ideas, or policies that elevated the people. We've had this bullshit of an SEA that takes 20,000 children every year and try to ram them into four schools. Who get in there, you win. The rest are all your KFC cashiers and security guards. Go and fight in the school. The opposition leader call all your hyenas from an African jungle because they have nobody there looking to take care of you so they could cuss you and bad talk you and put in your mind that you're born for nothing. That is what you have gotten as representation for 55 years. That's what you've gotten. So now we have a plan that gives every child a grade point, grade point average. Abolish the SEA. Abolish it. Create all schools as 10-year schools. Zone the school. Where you live, you go to school. You grow up with people who go into school where they live and you all grow up as a tight community. Win, win, win. When we zone the schools, we end the traffic. When school close in China, they have no traffic. The Dwen and the Racket Rail, we don't need that. We have some little overlaps, Colville Street and places all through the country that you need to go and tweak, fine-tune and make it work. But you don't need no Racket Rail. Zone the schools. From the minute you zone the schools, traffic done. When you give all the children a GPA and you abolish the SEA, each child's grade point average is targeted against a national set grade point average for our curriculum. So if our curriculum requires that success is 4.4, that every single term you want to aim for 4.4, your parents, you the parents, know every term how to track your child's progress by their performance and if the class doing badly you get to question the teacher and if the teacher have an attitude you get to go to the principal and if the principal ignore you you go to the supervisor of insurance of, of supervisor of education for your constituency 
on the board of directors that run your constituency, the board of supervisors. Because the grade point average for each child collectively makes a class average so the teacher has a GPA. And all the classes together makes the school average so the principal has a GPA. And all the schools in the constituency together makes a, school, a constituency average. So the supervisor of education has a GPA. So when the government, prime minister and the cabinet looks at the data map, a continuous updated data map, we will see which constituencies are failing at education because we're looking at 4.4 and we see Diego Martin West doing the least. So we go into Diego Martin West and we ask the supervisor of education. Everybody else hovering around 4.4, but you are 2.8. What is going on in Diego Martin West? They say, well, and she or he will look at all the schools in their constituency and say, we have 24 schools. 20 of them all hovering about 4.4. 4. 4. We only have four that fail in, that, not, that bring in down the constituency average. So let's go to those schools. And you talk to the principal, you say, your school is one of four that is bringing down the constituency average. What is going on in your school? I said, well, it's not the school, you know, because I have 12 classes and 11 doing 4.4. I have this one class that bring in on the average. So you go to that class and you talk to that teacher. And you say, your class bringing down the school average and your school bringing down the constituency average. What is going on in your class? And the teacher will talk about four children. These three disruptive and that fourth one, he don't come to school at all. Social services gets involved. Goes to the parents and say, listen, you need to understand this. Among the rights that your child has is a right to a quality and proper education. If you do not take that child to school and you do not assist that child in homework supervision to get his or her average up, we will take the child away. Foster care. You decide. You decide. Because your child has a right to education. The parents say, no, it's not that. My child can't read. We take it to therapy, we'll find out why you can't read. There will be, at the end of this entire exercise, a couple of people who have difficulty in the existing system. There will, be, there will be some. And then because you've identified them at an early age in their lives, they don't have to be left behind. For some reason, they just wouldn't fit into the system. And you know what you'll do? You'll find what they like. You'll help them maximize their life potential in some other discipline. Because again, that is the role of government to ensure no child gets left behind. And when you make a statement like no child gets left behind, you don't mean a seat for everybody. Because we could sit everybody in a playground. If you are not educating the children, what's the point of you? What's the point of it? What's the point? These are all issues. And every time I bring it up, people tell me, make sure that when you talk about what the other's doing wrong, you talk about what the PEP will do right. We have strong policies. We have an advisory council that's working out. We're going to hit the ground running. Day one. Day one, the legislative agenda. Day one, go into parliament, recall. Recall means after that day, any non-performing member of parliament or public official can be fired, triggered by a recall from among the people. Because you see, the Constitution of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago recognizes the people before anybody else, before president, prime minister, prosecutor, police, before pundit, priest, or imam. The Constitution of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago recognizes the people first. And it is in service of the people, all other offices, all other laws, everything else that happens from that sentence in the Constitution and the Indictable Offenses Act, the Summary Offenses Act, and every one of the laws of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago exists to serve the people of Trinidad and Tobago. The Trinidad and Tobago Police Service exists to serve the people of Trinidad and Tobago. The Regional Health Authority, the Tobago House of Assembly, all of these things, they exist for one purpose only to serve the people of Trinidad and Tobago. Then they will tell you how, why, what the objectives are, what are the rules, what governs them, and all of that. But their reason for existing is to serve the people of Trinidad and Tobago. And we need to get that. Commissioner, Acting Commissioner of Police, Stephen Williams, has one job. 
to serve you. Do you know that? Are you aware of that? Because the day that hits home, the day you realize that governments come and governments gone have taken your children's birthright, have consigned you to the life of suffering that you lead. Because you see, we've spent money in this country that could have bought a house for every citizen. Just the money that was stolen and bailed out Clico. The first $5 billion could have bought 200,000 houses. We've never been properly run. We've never been properly represented. When Kamala took that billion dollars for Coover Hospital, she looked you in the eye and said, I am going to pretend to care while my friends feast. Because the billion dollars spent on the Coover Hospital could have rebuilt Port of Spain, San Fernando, and Mount Hope. But we take jam because we only know two options, PNM and UNC, and both of them raping me. I might as well take rape from somebody who look like me. And that is the bullshit that politics has come down to in this country. How we vote is not how we party. Total and complete, unforgivable madness. This country has been reduced to a mess, a total and complete mess. A nation that is so fertile, it grows food by itself. We have it growing razor grass and cineplexes. Spending $5 billion a year importing food that we could do better right here. Right here. Tobago don't have to be tourism. Tobago could be farming again. Tobago could be agriculture again. It's up to Tobago. Trinidad could be tourism. Trinidad could be business. Trinidad could be shipping. Trinidad could be a tech hub. When India realized in the 80s that they were collapsing, they made themselves, they redid themselves. Now India is a giant. More patents for more technology are held by Indians in India than, any, than all other countries combined. The, all the Apple iPhone and all that bullshit you're using, the technology, India, nothing going on in Trinidad. Nothing. We built an in-tech park. Manning took public funds. Manning. You know it exists in Waller Field. Go and see what they built. Massive infrastructure. Nature taking it back. Because they prepared for the wedding. They had no idea about the marriage. So you create an in-tech park, but you didn't know what the hell you were going to do with it after. That is governance. They built a waterfront financial center. That's what they was building, you know. A financial center. Nobody knew about what the hell that meant after. But our policy then was build it and they will come. So you spend $700,000 per room to build a hotel. Call it the Hyatt. You spend money and rebuild Hilton. <laughs> you renovate Hilton. The money you spend could have built for Hilton. This nation should have people so comfortable, so safe, so happy. That's what it was made for. It's like the gods took this point in the earth and said, listen, let's make a perfect land, perfect temperature, perfect waters, perfect greenery. Let's make it fertile. It could grow anything to eat anything ever. Let's, let's fill it with the most diverse rainbow of ethnicities. Let's throw everybody together and give them a chance at real happiness. Let's create Eden. Let's make utopia. Let's make it so that you can stick a hole in the ground. Money want to come out. Sell that and get money. Your people don't ever have to stress or they could live nice and be nice. That's what we were given. And for some reason, for some reason, Satan came along. Satan showed up and said he will take us forward. And he will teach us greed. And he will teach us racism. And he will, he will teach us why my religion better than your religion. And my Papa God could fight your Papa God. And all this bullshit we want to talk. And the two sides. And the three sides. And it's so easy for us. I watch Trinidadians become so racist over a video of some Chinese workers not from Trinidad skinning a dog. Get Trinidad a chance with a hang every Chinese in Trinidad. I watching them now want to hang every Syrian because of one olive oil drizzling jackass and his fat boy partner. We need to stop that. When we say one people under one flag, listen to me. That is the only medicine you need to take. Anybody else tell you anything 
pissing on your back and telling you that it's rain falling. The only medicine you need for all the black you're black and for all the black party Balize House is black party and for all the black he's the blackest man in Trinidad Tobago. How come the entire top tier the, the, the big puppies of the PNM, none of them black. What is Kid Rowley trying to say? Is he confused? Hmm? If racism good for Balize, how come they don't practice what they preach? How come the hundred million dollar man not black? How come? Toss it aside. See it for the bullshit that it is. Unshackle yourself. Open the gates to the prison in your mind. See what they've done. Recognize Kamala for what she is. East Indian people of Trinidad and Tobago, you created a political party out of a sugar union that watched one party destroy your sugar company that used to take care of 90% of the East Indian families in the country that said it wasted up $500 million a year. Shut it down. But the CPEP on the URP that wasted a billion a year, they didn't shut that down. Eh, Rahal? You're so bright, you're stupid. But come back to this. When Darumai get into office, why they didn't bring agriculture back? How come it took Vasan Bharat five years of bullshit and the money sent from the European Union to pay farmers never reach farmers yet? How come? If that is the party of agriculture, see them for what they are. I drive through Freeport into Waterloo. They sent me a video showing somebody getting robbed in Waterloo the other day. I drive through and I watch these people because Dave Lux was correct when he sent me the list. They have plenty. I know more of beat them love until and see lots because I pass it every day. I live there go Martin West. So when I tell you about Bagatelle, Mason, Rich Plain, La Puerta, Abbey Pujad and Big Yard, I know them intimately. Other people in other constituencies know the suffering spots in theirs. Bring it to me. Bring it to me. We'll put all on blast. But these two political parties, the PNM and the UNC, have built Valsane, St. Clair, Fairways, and Goodwood Park. They've not built your community. It is not Goodwood Park, even though Keith and Stuart went and sat down on the rattan furniture under the salmon tree in Goodwood Park Park. It's not them that put the PNM in power. It's Abhi Pujar and Big Yard and La Puerta. And those people should fire Keith Rowley. Because he's never done anything for them. The roads in Digo Martin West are the worst roads in this country. And the member of parliament and the prime minister come from there. He come from there. But he's a stinking dirty man. Nasty, nasty man. Ravina boyfriend. Are you prime minister? You proud? Keith Rowley. You bust every mark you could have think of. When you run out of mark, you make up mark, you call it email gate. You went in the parliament under the, under the parliamentary privilege and lied to the nation. To this day, you can't defend it. You can't say where it come from. How you find it? You make a ass of Ken Gordon, who had on a stellar career until he spent one night in a meeting with you. You corrupt everything. You're like the reverse Midas touch. How come you could see corruption and bubble everywhere else? But you can't see what's going on on the port. How come? How come? Sharon, give him a nudge, the man. You're working at a big law firm. Tell him. Say, Kitos, you're looking like a jackass. The nation thinks they're being led by a jackass. You have nothing of value to say to anybody, at least, at least, when you jump out your skin to fire Marlene, because of association with somebody that you say was of ill character. Bucky Buck should sue you. You lucky Bucky Buck. Bucky Buck don't have the sense in his head to know that you've insulted him. And he, until you could prosecute him, brother, he have rights. He have rights. Bucky Buck have rights. You can't fire Marlin for lying with Bucky Buck because if, if association was a crime kit, you in jail. It's real bandit you slime with. And only today, everybody and their brother want to send me the deal with the two million dollars in US. Cocaine link in US two million dollar port fine. 
Two Trinidad and Tobago nationals are behind bars in Florida, USA on charges of intention to distribute cocaine after the United States-based Federal Bureau of Investigation cracked what it says is a drug and money laundering ring with ties to a Trinidadian contractor. So this is the Express, copy and paste media, where I'm getting this from. Sources in Trinidad and Tobago intelligence agencies and customs officials, Trinidad and Tobago and intelligence at this level with this government, that's an oxymoron. Sources in Trinidad and Tobago intelligence agencies and customs officials have confirmed the FBI's drug seizure is linked to the U.S. $2 million found concealed in plywood shipped to this country last month. Read that again. <clears throat> read that again. I'm not reading the whole article. I just wanted to read this. Sources in Trinidad and Tobago intelligence ag agencies and customs officials, sources in Trinidad and Tobago intelligence agencies and customs officials have confirmed, they not suspect, so a suspicion, they've confirmed the FBI's drug seizure is linked to the, two, the U.S. $2 million found concealed in plywood shipped to this country last month. That was published on December 1st, 2016. Cool. No problem with that. They follow, they follow the money. Follow the money. The discovery of U.S. $2 million in cash in a container at Point Lisa's on Friday is one thing. The other thing is that the police know who, who the money was destined to. So it is likely there could be an arrest soon. This is November 2016. On Friday, Customs and Excise Division officers and police discovered two blue-colored crocus bags containing U.S. $2 million in a container at the Point Lisa's port, which they believe is part of an elaborate money laundering and drug operation between groups of persons from North America and the Caribbean. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. The Customs and Excise Division has been ordered to forfeit the U.S. $2.2 million that was discovered in plywood on the Point Lisa port. In November 2016, officers of the Customs and Excise stopped a truck and trailer that was attempting to leave the Point Lisa port containing bundles of plywood. Concealed within the plywood, the officers found and seized $2,216,100 in United States currency. The controller of Customs and Excise applied to the magistrate's courts for an order that the seized cash be forfeited to the state. Customs and Excise was represented by State Counsel Shirley Shepard, and upon hearing the evidence given by officers in the seizure, Coover Magistrate Simongal Ramsaran granted the order after being satisfied that the conditions of the forfeiture were fulfilled in accordance with the Proceeds of Crime Act. I have one question to ask. Who was convicted? For this. Who? That's the missing story. It's proceeds of crime. So you forfeit it to the state, no problem. I have no problem with that. Who was convicted? Like the $600 million in cocaine to Norfolk, Virginia, that Faris al Rawi, the Attorney General of Trinidad Tobago, stood in the Parliament and told the people of this country, in a world where the United States of America will make you take Moby out your bag if it feel that it's suspect. But you could ship $600 million worth of cocaine and it not have a manifest, it not have a name, nowhere is there a bill of lading, nobody is held accountable. It's shipped by nobody. It's shipped to nobody. $600 million worth of cocaine swam to Trinidad on its own. Nobody could account how it reached here. How it reached inside the juice company. How it reached inside the juice cans. How it reached inside the juice box. How it get on the truck. How the truck get to wherever it went to ship it. Who signed for it in all of these places? Who paid the bill? You're shipping $600 million worth of something. Christ. Somebody, John Smith, Jim Brown, Jai Ram Simongal, somebody, somewhere, if I call anybody named as a real name, I'm sorry. Who? How could the Attorney General tell the nation that you can't find? My brother works for Canada Health. He is an epidemiologist. He is the guy that they send to find the pig in Mexico. The first pig with swine flu. They find the first cow with mad cow disease. They could have tell you where the first chicken with SARS come from. 
but they can't tell you who shipped 600 million dollars worth of cocaine from Trinidad. Faris Al Rawi, miss me with that bullshit, brother. This is not a real country. This is the Royal Imperial Majestic Banana Republic of do what the hell you like, lad. Only in this country, the copy and paste media that knows to send Mark Basant to Canada to knock on the door of the place that's supposed to be Bridgman Services to find a tape shot don't know how to send a journalist to Canada to ask to see the manifest, the bill of lading, who shipped this cocaine, to whom was it addressed or intended, who put it on the plane or the boat, who? But like I asked him, I guess we, we shall call this video that, who? I guess we could end how we begin. Rohanson and Anne. Who? Who, Rohan? Who? Shoot on the range too. Here are the fire parents. Progressive Empowerment Party is your party. It belongs to you. Do not miss the opportunity to take ownership. Stand with it. We are in Tunapuna this Saturday. We are in Tunapuna this Saturday at 6 p.m. Come and be a part of the movement. Come and join. Add your voice. Add yourself. Good evening, Felicia Holler, Chairman of the Progressive Empowerment Party. Good evening, everyone. You said that there was some stuff that you needed to tell the members and the viewers. Yes, just um, two things. Well, a third that I'll mention after. The first one is, um, for those who have been seeing Ali G, and, well, Ali G has been a big, big, well, not supporter, driver of this um back to school drive that we're having um we're trying to have all the items sent to her by the end of august i think it's august the 25th so we're asking anyone to support if you want to support locally as well message me or message ali g and uh, just tell us how you can support how you can donate to the effort i saw her today i was not able to comment on every single one but i saw her um, no, that's going to be a massive ship, mother. I can't believe what Ali yeah. was able to do on her own. Ali, you know I love you bad. You are a force of nature. I've told you already. Ten of you, and we can rebuild Trinidad and Tobago. I want to ask yeah. you, Felicia, is there a plan 
the distribution of these um, bags and, and school supplies that Ali and team, because I see Ali running a list of names and I want to tell all of you, I don't know your names by heart, but I want to tell all of you, the Progressive Empowerment Party claims you, owns you, loves you, thanks you from the bottom of our heart on behalf of all the poor children who are going to get this stuff that you're sending. What is the plan to distribute, Madam Chairman? I will actually turn that question on to Ali. Like I said, she's been running this, what I thought was single-handedly up until last night, and I really want to give her that encouragement. I am going on her guidance here. I want to support her. I want us as a party to support her with the flood relief drive. She was so instrumental in getting everything sent here. So I would be working with her for the next couple of weeks to sort out the list and who we're distributing to. And on this end, of course, we will be pulling together volunteers like the last time with the flood relief to have the distribution done. So people like, like Shamla, who was operating in South and can expect the usual suspects to come back together, Lima, Giselle, and crew? Yes. Okay, fantastic. You said there were two other things? Uh, the other one was just to let persons know. So similarly, so you can send money to Ali to support the book drive. You can also send money to support the barbecue. And this is this is um this message is mostly for our foreign supporters, well mainly in Canada, our foreign supporters and our members overseas who would like to contribute to the um the barbecue. But of course, you can't be there. Yeah, let's the get item. on a plane and come. <laughs> Well, if you can't come, come I and play all fours. I want to um, win. Yesterday, Savannah, was it Savannah or, or Nicole? Two of them is keep giving me a stick on Facebook. I win because I suggested pepper sauce and I win. So I said I was getting the juice, but I give it away. They say I can't win. So if they have an all fours competition on the barbecue, I can't win? I'd have throw my jack? Well, no, well, mm -hmm. I think you can. Mm -hmm. But the one with pepper sauce, that wasn't fair. You suggested that one, so no. Anyway, so that, yeah, the foreign people, I mean, really, and yeah, so we, yeah, so you can um, send the, we came up with a price of 10 US, so that sponsors a barbecue as well as um, just declaring fees to get it uh, wired down here. And any barbecue that you sponsor, I, as well as the rest of the team, I'm dragging you in this to Philip. We have to go downtown and we're going to give out to any of the... Oh, I know them. They know, they, they know me by name. You don't worry. You just give me how much barbecues you want distributed. We go in right down on Columbus Square and we go in by um, Riverside Plaza car park. They're waiting for you. Lovely. So send your money to Ali G. Um, actually message Ali G, letting her know that you want to support either the book drive or the barbecue or both and let's wait to have um so trinidadians could also if they don't want barbecue and they don't want to come and play all for us but they could sponsor a couple and just buy some tickets and the food could be sent to the homeless yes definitely but if you want to do that you need to get your orders in by the end of this week so they could still come to the office between 12 and 3 every day yeah so we're open tomorrow again, 12 to 3. On Saturday, we will be open from 12 to 3 if you want to drop by. We're not having any formal meeting, but we will be there. The team will be there. Stop by, get your barbecue ticket, sign up. Help pack more um, pampers, which is what we've been doing for the past, well, last week, Saturday, and we'll continue this Saturday. And, yeah, that's basically it. Um, uh, will there take me tickets on sale in Tunapuna? Yes, of course. At all our meetings, we have barbecue tickets i actually have to bring for a couple of persons and i need to get mine i keep forgetting i need to get mine so definitely we'll be having um tickets on sale on saturday excellent anything else um well yeah you just mentioned it guys everybody who i saw any threat tonight i saw a couple new people this was the first time i got to watch the threats and sorry watch the license monday i was really happy to be back all the new people that i'm seeing yes the pp is here we're out there we invite you to join us this saturday we have an amazing meeting ahead of you i have a special surprise for my audience for the not my audience for the um I have a special surprise for all the new people, all our loyal supporters. We're adding a little flavor to the program. So mm -hmm. come out, yes. I <laughs> come out, yes. Come out, join us, and, you know, join and be part of the Pep family. Excellent. Thank you very much for that, my friend. All right. That was the chairman of the Progressive Empowerment Party, Felicia Hola. She says there's going to be a surprise in Tunapuna. The last time there was anything that had a surprise, people pour ice on me. I don't think I go in. Um, yeah. 
So, straight up, before we wrap up, everything that we discussed tonight, it's yours. Take it out there. Discuss it. Tell people, I said today, forget about me. It's not about me. You're building your party. Build your party. Take the issues to heart. Take them out in the public space. Look for every opportunity to talk to people who are talking. You see all them chatter, 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 sick of fans on the feed? I was going to share. It's like the PNM falling apart. I really think some Pierce Robinson die hard PNM calling them out to task on this same Rohanson and Ann madness fiasco. I don't even think the PNM people like what Rowley and his cabal have done to the PNM. I think the country ready for a radical change. We want to move away from the, from the concept of race voting, tribal voting, that has gotten us nothing but abuse for 55 years. Make sure you're on that Elections and Boundaries Commission list. We want volunteers to come on board. Listen, huh? we're getting ready for elections. We want to start training people to be um, campaign managers. We want to train. We want to start grooming candidates, put you on the ground from now so the people of the community get to know you. You must, according to the PEP, have to come. You have to live in the constituency that you want to run in. Yeah? We want to make sure homegrown talent. Don't look for names and faces. Look for people who will deliver real representation. The Progressive Empowerment Party is on the road. We're going, we're having a public meeting every two weeks. Straight after Tuna Puna this Saturday, two weeks from then we're in Point Fourteen. Anybody who has a place that wants to hold a cottage meeting or a pep rally can contact Felicia Holder or Nessa Logan on the thread. On my wall you could find them. I think that is about it. Um, yeah? They got last news. They got last news. Talk it out. Yes. If it is the building, I saw East, West, North, and South. big truck to start from Port of Spain and to go south, east, west, everywhere, chip into that song, vote them out. We're coming to liberate, you know. Come on board. Salvation is here. This is your party. Come and be a part of it. We've laid the groundwork. We started the construction. You come and build it out now. There's room for everybody under that umbrella. Red and yellow make orange, so don't worry about who you didn't like before. We're loving up everybody. It's a full love off session. This Saturday, we have no public meeting at Stanmore Avenue because we're having a massive public rally on the corner of Orsonville and Sapodilla in Orsonville Park. The settings look real sexy. So come down. Those who, you know, your, you know yourself, those who want to bring food and share. And I wanted to say something, eh? I keep forgetting. You see the farmer, that gentleman, I didn't get your name, who brought that bag of pimento peppers for me in Barakpur. You touch me deep, eh? You touch me deep, I want to tell you. I know what it took for you to give that bag of pimento peppers away. I promise you, I promise you, that investment will reap rewards. We come in to rescue this country. To all of you who want to come and contribute, make cake, make sweet bread, make bun, cinnamon roll, pone. Nobody has yet brought cassava pone to a pep event yet. And I want to encourage this. Eh? Pone is something that we need to be encouraging. And if you bring pone and you're sharing for me, I like the corner piece. If you find the darkest corner piece, save that for me. See everybody in Tuna Puna. Come out in your numbers. Bring the whole family. Mommy and daddy, if they're walking slow, we will pause and wait for mommy and daddy to settle down and sit down. Bring the kids. We have all the children there. And we have a good time. Come on, the family affair is a real obsession. Come and join everybody under the orange umbrella. See you in Tuna Puna, 6 p.m., corner of Orsonville and Sapodilla Street. Stay safe, Chiran Tobago.